Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn this mini portable scanner into a large format digital back. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com and you heard me right, we are going to take this mini digital scanner and turn it into a four by five digital back. And what I mean by that is we're actually going to transform this scanner uh, so we can put it on the back of a four by five large format film camera and use the actual scanning mechanism to create a digital photo based on what the lens on the 4x5 camera is seeing. So there are actually a couple different options of mini scanners you can get to do this project. I'm using the FlipPal mobile scanner, uh, and it's a great little scanner. It retails for $180 new on Amazon. I got this one on eBay for $100, so you can get it much cheaper if you get it used. This scanner runs on double A's and it captures to an SD card, so it's an extremely portable option, which makes it great to be a digital back. Uh, you basically turn it on here, take something you wanna scan, put it on the bed, push this button, and in about 30 seconds, you have a full scan. And you can actually see right here on the screen, uh, it's actually showing the scanning process as it goes along. And it's actually not a terrible resolution. It scanned at 300 DPI at a resolution of 2400 by 3600. So the scanner won't get you the same quality you could get with an actual four by five piece of film, but you know, it's just such a cool idea, I had to try it. Now the big question is, how do we turn a flatbed scanner that's designed to capture a pre-existing image into something that can capture light coming from a lens? It's actually pretty simple. We're actually going to take the glass in the flatbed scanner and grind it into ground glass. To do this project, first of all, you're going to need the mini scanner, uh, but then you're going to need a piece of glass, and this is to actually grind the glass itself. You, you need to actually use a piece of glass to grind glass. Uh, and then you're gonna need a piece of scrap wood to use as a handle on the glass. And you're also gonna need a couple spoonfuls of 600 grit silicon carbide. You can't get this in a store, you'll have to order it online. It's not too expensive, I got this for $15. Um, I'm only gonna use a couple spoonfuls of it. We don't wanna grind the glass when it's on the scanner because we don't wanna risk getting any grit or any water into the electronics. So first we're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the top half of the scanner. Once we have the top half removed, we're going to put down some cardboard because this is gonna get a little messy. Take your piece of glass that you're gonna use as a grinder and attach your handle to it. Um, you can glue it. I was lazy, so I just used some duct tape. Then you're gonna take your silicon carbide and just take a spoonful of it and put it down on the glass. Now we're gonna add a little bit of water. Just add a couple drops of water to the mix. Now take your tool and evenly spread the grit on the glass. Now just take your tool and start rubbing the glass on the silicon on the glass of the scanner. And you'll notice right away that you're creating a lot of grinding in the glass and that's great. Basically we're roughing up the surface of the glass so it turns it into a ground glass that can capture the image circle of a lens. Make sure to grind the glass evenly and you're gonna do this for about three minutes. When you're done grinding, take the glass, rinse the grit off it in the sink and dry it off. And your glass now should look like a ground glass. If there are any patches you missed, if anything seems a bit uneven, add another spoonful of silicon carbide, add some water, and grind it again, focusing on the spots you missed. Once the ground glass is ready, dry it and reattach it to your scanner. For more even distribution of light onto your ground glass, you're going to need a Fresnel. I got this five by seven Fresnel on Amazon for $5. Lay it texture side down on your ground glass and tape it down with duct tape. Next, you're going to want to add a camera to your scanner. And I went with the Travel Wide 4x5. Uh, this is a very, very lightweight, compact 4x5 camera. It was kickstarted a couple years ago. And you can't buy it new anymore, but you can still get it used online for a fairly reasonable price. And the reason I went with this is number one, I already owned one. <laughs> and number two, it's just very, very lightweight. Now, because this camera uh, is designed to slot a four x five holder uh, right in this part of the camera, I actually taped the scanner behind where the film plane is supposed to be. So I can't focus this setup to infinity, but that's okay because I've mostly been using this to focus on you know, still lifes, uh, more close up things. So I can focus to at least a couple feet, but if I ever wanna focus on you know, far away objects, if I wanna do landscapes, I will have to modify the camera to make that happen. Let's actually shoot a photo right now. I have this old vintage Duoflex Kodak. Is we're gonna to wanna to put the camera into bulb mode. So we're gonna cock the shutter and then pull back this button. 
when we fire it, it's gonna lock the aperture open. And uh, we're gonna leave it open at uh, f6.8. That's the widest setting on this camera. Um, and that's gonna be plenty for the sliding. And uh, now we just focus, I'm looking through the ground glass here. And I'm actually going to cover up this back panel because of the lights right here. I don't want those to interfere. Let's hit scan. The scanner is going to do its work. It's gonna scan across the image. It's about 20 seconds. Now it's coming back. Let's look at the image. And there we go, you can kind of see it, not very well. This little LCD screen doesn't do a great job, but it gives you kind of a feel for if you got the exposure right or not. Here are some of the images I was able to capture. And as you can see, it's kind of uncanny how I can capture a four by five film look with a digital scanner. Uh, I get this really nice shallow depth of field. It just has this really nice vintage four by five film look. Because the scanner takes about 20 seconds to scan the image that your camera is creating, you can move the camera or have your subject move to create trippy images like this. One of the things you may have noticed right away is these images are not color. They kind of have this bluish black and white monochrome look to them. And that's because as far as I can tell, the light in the scanner is actually shining light onto the image and then bouncing back. And that's how it's capturing color. And because it's not really doing that, instead it's actually capturing light coming through the lens and hitting the glass, uh, that's limiting it somehow. It's unable to capture color. Now there are some downsides to using a scanner camera. One of the big ones is you are capturing the image off the ground glass. So you're gonna be picking up all the texture of the ground glass along with the image. So that means you're gonna have a lot of grain, a lot of texture, and you can kind of address this with filters in Photoshop, but you're not gonna completely get rid of it. The upside though is if you're looking for kind of a grainy film look, uh, the grain in the ground glass can actually emulate that and give you kind of that feel. And with my setup, I'm not just capturing the texture of the ground glass, I'm also getting a little bit of the texture of the Fresnel lens. So if you're using a setup like this and you don't want any Fresnel texture in your photos, uh, just put a little bit of a spacer in there, uh, cut out some cardboard and put it between the ground glass and the Fresnel and you should get rid of all that texture. Another thing you might run into is scan lines. Uh, depending on if there's motion in a shot um, or if the light changes while you're scanning, you will see kind of variations in exposure. And there's nothing you can really do about this because it takes about 20 seconds to scan the image, you know, and things might change in that interim. You know, the sun might change, lighting might change. So you are gonna get some kind of weird lines in some of your shots. If I'm shooting in a dark room, uh, you know, towards a light source, I can leave this exposed and it won't affect the image at all. But I found when I was shooting outside in bright sunlight, if I let sunlight get in this back area, it actually ruined the image. I use my coat to cover it. And in the future, I'll probably build some kind of flap that I can raise and lower so I can cut out the light when I need to. Another issue is it's kind of hard to compose with the ground glass because of all these scanner elements that are covering part of it. So I kind of just had to point it and pray that I got a good composition. I was only able to see little elements of the frame. So that's another limitation of this setup. You're gonna go through a lot of batteries with this setup. I shot about 30 shots before I had to replace the double A's and this uses four double A's. And you know, the way I like to think about it is it's kind of like shooting film, you know, with a roll of 35 millimeter, you get about 24 to 36 shots per roll. So it's the same with this, you know, you just have to replace the four batteries every 30 or so shots. I also taped the scanner digital back to a larger 4x5 rail camera. And the upside to this is I was able to remove the 4x5 film holder altogether, which meant I was able to achieve infinity focus. I didn't have, you know, this extra space to deal with. Here are some of the shots I captured with that setup. While well, in many ways it was a lot easier and better to use the scanner back on the larger studio 4x5 camera, I think I'm going to keep my setup the way it is. I think I'm going to keep uh, the scanner back taped to the travel wide 4x5 simply because of how portable it is. You know, using this little Photo Deox mini tabletop tripod, uh, I can just throw this in a bag and take it anywhere, just plop it on a flat surface, and I'm ready to shoot. And I think that's one of my most favorite things about using a mini portable scanner as a 4x5 back. The ability to create something that looks similar to a 4x5 film shot with a fast digital back is just so cool. And yeah, I know it's weird, I know it's gimmicky, I know it has a lot of flaws, but I think I'm gonna be shooting with this setup for quite some time and having a lot of fun. 
Now, I did not figure this out all by myself. There are a couple people online who really helped me out. Thanks to Randy Serafan on instructables.com for the initial concept, High Dynamic Mind on Flickr for all the helpful advice. He's actually already done a build like this and he helped me out a ton on this video. Also, thanks to Marcus Hofstadter and Tony Santo for tips on making a homemade ground glass. If you have any questions about the build today, any of the steps that didn't make sense to you uh, or any of the products you might need, comment below. I'd love to help you out. And click right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more crazy, weird DIY projects like this one. I'm Sean with GoToDeox.com and thanks for watching.